Hi, DD Solar here. Can a solar panel drill a hole in wood? Actually, it can when it's powering a drill directly. So what I did is I had one of my new meters here that I bought for monitoring a solar panel, and I thought, why not hook it up to my cheapest drill and just see how far I get. My cheapest drill is this Harbor Freight unit right here. It's actually one of my favorites because it was so cheap and yet it works pretty good. I was amazed how cheap this tool was and yet I've drilled a lot of holes with it. It does. I don't have any complaints or any problems. It uses the older NICAD battery and the terminals are clearly labeled positive and negative. There's really nothing that could go wrong, I would think. Outside the building, my solar workshop, there's a single 100 watt panel connected to this meter here and also connected to these alligator clips. Now the wires are pretty long and I imagine they have quite a lot of voltage drop in them. Since there's actually two 100 watt solar panels, I could put two in parallel, but I wanted to see how much can one 100 watt solar panel aiming 90 degrees at the horizon, which is improper aiming, how far could I get with that much power? Okay, so let's go ahead and do the test. The battery terminals are clearly labeled positive and negative. It's possible that hooking them up backwards won't do any damage, but I don't want to risk my drill, so I'm going to make sure and connect them correctly. So on the right hand side is positive. So I'll just go ahead and connect the alligator clip, put negative on the other side. Now there's the meter. Unfortunately, the solar panel that I'm using, it has a lower open circuit of about 18 volts. That meter reads about 0.2 volts low, so it's really about 18.6 volts. That's still pretty low for a 12 volt solar panel, and it's not even that hot outside, but it is what it is. A tool like this would like to see about 20 volts, but let's see what it does given the power that's available. Okay, so first I'm just going to run the tool without loading it, and I'm just going to observe the meter to see what the behavior is. First thing I'm going to do is just push the trigger all the way down and see what happens. Okay, when I first pull the trigger, you may have noticed the display reset. I'm going to go ahead and do it again, watch the display, and you'll see that happen. Now the reason for that is a solar panel really can't absorb a surge. The harder you pull on it, the lower the voltage goes until it reaches pretty much zero volts. This meter is not fast enough to see what actually happened. I can't see how low the voltage went. It probably went below 3 volts, I'm guessing, but the meter requires a minimum voltage to stay running, so it doesn't matter. Obviously, if I pull the trigger really fast, there's not enough power there, and it momentarily drops the meter out. If I was more careful with the trigger, the meter will not reset because the surge is not as much. And as you can see, I got about 30 watts running wide open, but the tool was not loaded. Next, let's try drilling a hole in the wood and use full throttle, and let's see what the maximum power is it's achieved. Now, this meter isn't going to capture everything, but I think it's good enough for what I'm doing. that time I saw the power go over 50 watts. Of course I was trying to pay attention to the hole I was drilling, but I'm quite sure it went over 50 watts. Now I have some ideas on how to run more powerful tools. But right now I want to keep it simple, just a solar panel going straight to a tool and no more gadgets or devices in between. I'm rather fond of my tools and I don't want to destroy them in an experiment. Of course cordless power tools are polarized and you have to make sure to hook up the positive and negative correctly. Some power tools may have an electronic circuit inside that would be instantly destroyed if you hook the polarity up backwards. Some tools are so simple they're just a motor, but I'm not going to take any chances. The next tool I want to try is my Ryobi 18 volt cordless glue gun. I really like this tool and I, want, I don't want to burn it up. It could have a digital circuit inside or I don't really know. But just in case, I went ahead and I polarized or marked the polarization of the bottom to make sure I never hook it up backwards. Okay, let's try hooking it up. Now 
All right, it's hooked up, and now let's try turning it on, and let's see what the meter reads. Now I'm going to zoom in on the meter because it's a bit hard to read. And surprisingly, the solar panel voltage is staying up pretty high. I didn't think it would stay that high. And it's drawing about 50 watts. I did not think it would draw that much power. Now this hot glue gun is actually, uh, it's no joke, it does get quite hot. It's one of my favorite tools of all time. And I was very, very happy with it. But let's go ahead and try this tool on solar and see how far I can get with it. 59 watts. Seems like the highest reading I saw was 59 watts. Now because this is a pretty beefy hot glue gun, I expect it's going to take a while to, to heat up. And I don't know what kind of heating element it has. Could just be a coil of wire for all I know. But I'm watching the power settings to see if they change. It's hanging around 16 volts, and that's reading a little bit low. That meter reads about 0.2 volts low. So it's actually drawing slightly more power than the meter shows. It looks like it's slowly reducing its power requirement. So it could have a regulator of some sort, or it could be one of those ceramic heating elements that regulates itself. I don't really know. It is in fact getting a little bit warm. Okay, so I'm going to let this heat up. It does take a while to heat up, and then I'm going to cut back in when it's uh, hot enough to use. The glue gun is currently drawing less power, so it does seem to have some sort of regulation. And it's slowly creeping down. It's now down to 38 watts. I believe it's hot enough. And here you can see the alligator clips going in the hot glue gun. So it's gotten pretty hot. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. See how much glue I can get out of it. Oh yeah, it's good. Oh yeah, it's, it's smoking hot. I can literally see steam coming off to my left. You can't see it on camera, but there's literally steam flying out. So yeah, it's extremely hot. This hot glue gun is hotter than others I've used. It's no joke at all. And I can tell that I wouldn't have any problem using this all day off of solar. Yeah, the glue is nice and hot. So definitely not a failure of an experiment. And the nice thing about this is it would go all day off the grid, no DC converters, no battery, nothing to help the glue gun, just running straight off of solar. So I really, really like this setup, and I think I'm actually going to start using it. I am a bit skittish at fooling around with my power tools. I don't want to risk blowing them up. But so far, I've had good success. So I'm going to go ahead and give this device a try. This is a Ryobi cordless soldering iron. It can also run off of grid power. I've never run it off of grid power. I always use a battery to power it. What I would like is a soldering iron that runs all day directly off a solar panel. That would be very, very useful because this thing eats the batteries pretty quick. My guess is it might be a little too powerful, but we'll see. I've turned the soldering iron on and it's running at about 50 watts. Really not too bad. That's about the same as the hot glue gun. And hopefully you can see the meter. So it's already dropping. Now it's about 47 watts. So actually this might be a success. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's still dropping. I think it's going to work, so I'm going to go ahead and put some water on my sponge here and give this thing a try. And I absolutely, definitely will be using this directly off of solar if this works. Because this soldering iron, although I really like it, it eats the batteries like crazy. And uh, it's a kind of annoying. It is nice having a soldering iron that runs off of batteries for field work. But when you're on the workbench and you want to use renewable energy, a battery doesn't work because it doesn't last very long. But a solar panel is going to run all day. So, okay, it looks like it's cycling on and off rapidly. You can see the meter is turning on and off. Or I should say the current flow is turning on and off. The meter is just showing. It's probably not too accurate. It's not fast enough. But obviously the solar panel can easily handle the soldering iron. It's not even a problem. The soldering iron has a green light, which means it should be ready to use. And I do need to do some soldering. So I have my soldering extraction fan turned on. That's right over here. It just pulls the fumes out. I'm just going to test the soldering iron and see if I can use it or not. See if I can get this wire to come off. And these are big terminals here and they use a lot of heat, so... The circuit board is taking all the heat out of the wire.
Okay, get the wire off of there. Seems to work. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's any different. Next, I have another hard job for it. I need to remove this terminal here that I attached temporarily. And once again, it's quite a lot of metal here. And it sucks the heat right out. But it took it right off. So it might be acting a little bit differently. I did turn the heat up pretty high. I feel like I had to turn it up higher than I would off a battery. That could be my imagination. But otherwise, it does seem to work. It seems to work. Just to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and tin the terminal on this supercapacitor here. Puts out a lot of smoke, so... Yeah, it's working a lot better. I had to turn the heat up. It's possible that the heat has to be turned up higher uh, because it's running off a solar panel. But it could just be my imagination. Just to further convince myself, one more quick test. Actually, it's a little bit harder. I'm going to attach this spade terminal to the positive of the supercapacitor, which is can be kind of difficult, and I'm just going to see if it will cooperate. And yes, it does appear to have enough power to get that to melt. Okay, I'm convinced that this soldering iron will run off a 100 watt solar panel, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Earlier, I forgot to show that the underside of this block of wood is actually broken out, so it's really not drilling through a full 2x4. However, I'm very confident that it would. It seemed to have the same amount of power, more or less, that it had off of battery. But just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and test it again. Yeah, it still has no problem, even through a full width 2x4. Now, I also wanted to be able to drive screws, and I was curious, can I drive a screw? I seriously doubt it's going to have enough power to drive a big screw, but how about a small screw like this small deck screw? And let's try putting it into a pre-drilled hole. It should be able to handle that. I don't see why not. Oh yeah, it's got the power. Through a pre-drilled hole, it's not a problem. But it does not have the torque to back it out. So the issue here is this particular device, I don't think it has a low and high gear. It doesn't. So. It doesn't have the power, really, to drive screws. I guess you could if you pre-drilled all the holes. Yeah, it doesn't have the power or grunt. But that's okay. It's still very useful for drilling holes. My guess is if I had uh, two solar panels in parallel, I could probably drive screws more easily, but I'm not too concerned about it. I'm fairly certain that the solar panel will have no problem running this next tool. This is a Ryobi rotary tool, cordless. Got it hooked up, and it's on speed number 5, which is the highest speed. It does sound a little bit slow, and that's not surprising. It's not getting the full voltage. So let's see if this will actually do anything useful. To test the tool, I just put in a drill bit. And I put it on the highest speed. This is close enough to a real test. If it can handle some drilling, it should be all right. It should be usable. And I hit the cutoff. And yeah, it'll drill a hole and it'll do some cutting and grinding. I think this tool automatically cuts out to protect the motor. Anyhow, I'm going to drill another hole, and this time I'll try not to cover the meter so you can see the voltage and power. Yes, it's well able to drill a hole. Hard to tell if the power tool was cutting out due to voltage, or the tool itself was deliberately turning the motor off. But I can assure you it has enough power to cut and grind. I just don't want to use a cutting wheel or anything like that because I have to get out my safety glasses and uh, this is a, a way to test the motor without using a cutting wheel. This drill bit is quite a heavy load for it. Actually it's really overkill for a tool like this. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are tons more like it on the way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.